friends here in Australia and Africa, and hopefully new friends who have logged in this evening to watch our first ever Africa Zoom presentation. Now, hopefully we have mastered this technology and the presentation will be all smooth sailing. Uh, I think we promoted the session as ending at 7.30, but uh, we will be ending a lot earlier than that, so you can all get it back to, um, to your regular Wednesday night routines. Um, just out of curiosity, is 6.30 p.m. a good time for this type of event? Uh, if you want, uh, please let us know your thoughts in the Q&A box. Um, if we do have a glitch or two, I hope you will be understanding. So settle back and relax, and I trust you all have a nice uh, beverage in hand. Recommended would be a cold, crisp South African white wine. So let me introduce myself and Backtrack Adventures. Uh, my name is Jim Drapes, and I'm a director of Backtrack and your host for this evening, and I will be part of your guide team on our Ruby anniversary safari uh, next year in April. Uh, Backtrack commenced operations in 1984 as an adventure tour operator, and uh, we mainly were operating treks in exotic locations worldwide, and we also were operating as a specialist travel agency. Uh, from our head office in Brisbane, as part of our 40-year Ruby anniversary celebrations during each month in 2024, we intend to operate a, a different special tour to all our favourite locations worldwide. In our office tonight is Naomi, who will be attempting to answer any of your questions you place in the chat box throughout the evening. And in beautiful Victoria Falls, a big hello to Trish Pritchard, who I will introduce to you all shortly. In Africa, our beautiful Africa Safari is all happening in April. Uh, but we do also have a Kilimanjaro trek planned in April for all the trekkers out there. And uh, in August, we will be operating one of our very popular self-drive safaris uh, called Wild Botswana. That's where you can drive a luxury four-wheel drive safari, uh, safari camper. Uh, now it's in the wilds and obviously uh, it's a full-on camping experience, and this will be fully guided, and you don't require any prior four-wheel drive experience. Great four-wheel driving and lots of wildlife, and that's all in the beautiful wilds of Botswana and the Okavango Delta. So details uh, are available from our website for all of those departures or contact us. Um, right now, we are currently upgrading our website with a whole new look. And uh, many of our special anniversary trips that we have planned for 24, uh, such as our Mongolian adventure and our sub-Antarctic islands cruise, to name just uh, but a few, uh, are not yet listed on the site. But Beautiful Africa is on the website now, and uh, as are the other two African departures just mentioned. Uh, the new Bells and Whistles website will be up and running soon. Um, okay, let's go on safari, uh, where you don't have to drive, but sit back and enjoy Africa in comfort and unique style. So say goodbye to good old Oz and g'day Africa. Um, now our Ruby anniversary safari is set in Zimbabwe. My first ever group to Africa in the 80s was to Zimbabwe, and that was a Brisbane school group. And for me, that was the start of my love affair with Africa. Safari, um, safaris in Africa and Zimbabwe has always been uh, uh, my passion. And Zimbabwe is a safe, friendly, welcoming destination that ticks all the boxes for a superb African safari. Um, why do most Australians travel to Africa? Uh, for amazing wildlife experiences, for the iconic African scenery, and for new cultural experiences. And uh, Zimbabwe will provide all of that and more. So we start in Victoria Falls on our safari. That's up the top left there. And over the following 21 days, we proceed to leisurely circumnavigate the entire country. So from Victoria Falls down to Wangi National Park, then onto the Matobo Hills, then uh, the Great Zim Monument, and then we diddly bop over to the Eastern Highlands and then onto Harare, the capital. And from there up to the Zambezi River and Mana Pools, uh, 
uh, back to Lake Kariba from Matusa Donna National Park, uh, where after our adventure there, we'll board a charter flight back to Victoria Falls, and that will complete our uh, circ circumnavigation of um, Zimbabwe. Now, this itinerary is arranged, so you meet the daily objectives at a really relaxed pace, uh, with multi-day stops at all locations except one. So starting in Victoria Falls, we will use air conditioned, um, an air-conditioned coaster bus rather than our normal big beast, as the coaster is best suited to Zimbabwean roads and the speed limits. And as well, we will need, um, we will need to use four-wheel drive safari vehicles on occasion, boats, and a charter flight uh, to complete our safari. Um, as I said, I do love Africa, and I admit that up front. And Victoria Falls is also a very special place for me. And it is the throbbing heart of Africa and our base in Africa. Uh, when we're there in April, the entire 1.7 kilometre length of the falls will be just pumping. And it's at its capacity. It's a, truly a breathtaking sight. Even Dr Livingston, who named the falls in um, honour of his queen at the time, Queen Victoria, he was in awe. The falls, uh, though, are known locally as uh, Musio Tunya, the smoke that thunders. Uh, on arrival, uh, on our arrival, Trish will be waiting for us at the new Victoria Falls International Terminal. Trish is the one with hair. Uh, g'day, Trish. Uh, I know you tuned in uh, to this Zoom broadcast from your home in Victoria Falls. So uh, let me introduce Trish to everyone. Uh, Trish is a Zimbabwean girl. Uh, last born and bred, and will be an important part of your guide team throughout our 21 day adventure. For over 30 years now, Trish and I and our safari cap, uh, companions have had tons of fun uh, and shared amazing adventures from Uganda in the north right down to the tip of Africa at Cape Town. Uh, yeah, Trish. And Henry, our transport manager, who you'll meet in a moment, uh, they'll transport us on our arrival to our base at Amadeus Lodge, which is a secluded haven of beauty and peace. Uh, here we'll meet up with all our safari members and have our first safari briefing. We'll also be able to rest up after our flight and prepare for our welcome to Africa dinner tonight. Um, throughout this entire safari, all meals are included and we have planned some great culinary experiences. Tonight will be no exception at Dusty's. Uh, here you'll get the chance to dine on a sumptuous home-cooked Zimbabwean meal. Very yummy, I can assure you. And uh, look, by the way, the whole itinerary from Victoria Falls onward is 99% all-inclusive. Even the tips are included um, in the tour price. So uh, let's quickly introduce you to the complete safari, uh, safari team, the whole support team. From tef, top left, uh, we have Henry Malanzi, our driver, uh, driver throughout the safari. He's a proud Zimbabwean, a great mechanic and the safest driver on the road and our mate on many safaris over the years. Next to him is Julian. Julian is a uh, Zimbabwean professional guide and he'll join us for three days in Wangi. Uh, National Park, which is one of the greatest uh, wildlife reserves in Africa, and the first uh, wild um, wild or national park uh, in uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh, and, and to say, look, that Julian can track ants over cement is definitely an understatement. Over next to Julian is Paul Hubbard. Uh, Paul is yet another proud Zimbabwean. He's a historian and archaeologist who will join us uh, for two nights at both uh, the two UNESCO World Heritage Sites that we'll be visiting early on, uh, firstly at Matopo Hills and then for two nights at Great Zimbabwean Monument. Uh, Paul was voted one of the top 10 guides in Africa by the prestigious UK Vanity Fair uh, Travel Guide. Uh, then we've got Sue. Uh, Sue, yes, there, there she is, another Zimbabwean lass and historian. Uh, she will enthrall us with tales of daring do of the famous explorer, Dr. Livingston, um, I presume, uh, when we return to Victoria Falls for our last two days uh, of exploration. Next is Steve Edwards. Yep, yet another Zimboy. Uh, he will host us, host us at um, his lodge 
on Lake Kariba for three nights. He's a gifted guide, raconteur, and a keen birder. Uh, then we've got Sib Zabanda, uh, Zimbabwean guide, uh, extraordinaire. Uh, he's got the eyesight of an eagle. Sibs will join us in Wangi National Park with Julian. And then Steve Bolnick, Zimbabwean, of course, professional guide. His love of all things bush is infectious. And Steve will guide us around for three days in Mana Pools, uh, a unique UNESCO heritage listed ecosystem that borders uh, the wild Zambezi River. Okay, let's get back uh, to day two and we'll run through the itinerary and provide just a taste of where we will be going and what we will be uh, doing and seeing on our adventure. Um, after breakfast on day two, before we head off for Wangi National Park, uh, we'll head down to the falls and meet up with Innocent uh, for a private tour of the falls. Now, Innocent is there. He's the one wearing the cap on the left. And I can see Trisha there also up the back with the sunnies. Anyway, um, Innocent can tell you how many litres of uh, water flow over the falls at the time we're there. And uh, he knows everything about the falls and has been guiding our friends around the falls for now for over a decade. So after uh, we complete our early morning tour, we'll head back to the lodge for a quick lunch and then we'll hit the road uh, for our first uh, full on safari experience at Wangi National Park. So it's just a, a short hop and skip down the road to Wangi National Park. And as I said a moment ago, uh, this is one of Africa's greatest wildlife reserves. And uh, on arrival, we'll, we'll check into our luxurious safari camp uh, for our three night stay. So all your ensuite tents are set in the bush on a ridge line overlooking a, a permanent water hole. And uh, in this pic, I think you can see alleys and there's even a little baby one there all enjoying a drink. Uh, throughout the safari, we'll be utilizing a variety of very comfortable all en suite superior class accommodation. And that is a very nice pick there of your wangi safari tent. That's the bathroom area, obviously. Uh, but I hate to say it's uh, better than my current bathroom at home. And uh, I must say, I think my brother-in-law Jeff is watching tonight. Uh, mate, do you think you could help uh, Em and I build something similar to that at Clifford Street? I, I might be calling on you soon. Um, all meals will be served at night in the dining tent uh, while we're on safari and dinners are served with wine and spirits. And uh, throughout the safari, we intend to make mealtime something, something very, very special. So for the next few days, we'll all experience an authentic African safari. And Julian and Sibs will guide us around on foot if you wish, and as well by vehicle on morning and afternoon um, game finding excursions. So on these game excursions, uh, we'll get up close and personal with a wide variety of African, um, unique African animals, and maybe even join up with a herd of elephants as in this pic, and head off for a short uh, little diddly bop with them. Uh, look, this is a good time to remind you that binoculars are essential, especially for picking up, uh, picking out animal details, and of course, to, to really view the amazing bird life that we're going to see. So it's all about wildlife while we're in the national parks and the wildlife reserves, more wildlife, more wildlife, and even more wildlife. Um, Sibs, as you can see there, as I said earlier, Sibs has amazing eyesight. And he'll be a great help to us. Sometimes the animals, they're a little bit shy and they can hide and they can just be um, a little hard to spot unless you've got a really well-trained eye. Uh, so, oops, going back on. From Wangi, we move on to another unique ecosystem. We'll move on to another unique ecosystem at Matopos National Park. Um, there we go. There we are. Paul is our historian here, and he will um, join us for two days. And here, Paul will add just that extra uh, specialist knowledge. He's also an archaeologist, and he lives nearby in Bulawayo, which is uh, the second largest city. 
once again basing ourselves at unique and very comfortable accommodation uh, with Paul's assistance, we'll spend the next two days deeply immersed in this amazing UNESCO World Heritage Site. Um, the spectacular granite hills uh, are a feature of this national park and they hide a special treasure that is the largest ancient rock art collection in the world. And they also provide a safe refuge for a well-protected breeding group of uh, white rhinos. Uh, which we intend to head out and locate while we're there. Many of the sacred sites hidden away are still today uh, meeting places uh, of worship and ritual for the local people. Um, I'm sure my old polo mate King Charles won't mind, but I nicked this page out of his photo album while staying at the palace in London for the coronation. And just like the Queen Mum and her daughter, uh, Liz, seen here in the bottom left, we too will visit Cecil Rhodes's grave, which is located on top of one of the large granite hills. Uh, of course, Cecil is somewhat of a, a controversial uh, figure today. Cecil led the annexation of vast swathes of Southern Africa to swell the coffers of the British Empire. He was also co-founder of the De Beers Diamond Company, which uh, till very recently controlled the entire world diamond industry. This entire region is both scenically uh, spectacular and historically fascinating. Uh, next stop for two nights is another UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Great Zim uh, Barwia National Monument. And once again, Paul will join us here to provide his expert knowledge. This site is extensive. It covers nearly three square kilometers uh, with the King's enclosure here seen um, is the centerpiece. And it was occupied from uh, approximately 1000 AD to 1450 AD. And at its height, it is estimated had a population of more than about 20,000. And they traded uh, gold and other goods all along the east coast of Africa, uh, from Egypt south, and from artifacts uh, located uh, at the site recently. It is believed they may have traded with places as far away as China. So with Paul, we will learn a lot more about this amazing piece of, um, uh, of African history. Uh, once again, our accommodation will be very, very comfortable. Um, each of the rooms here overlook the site. Next stop, the cool misty mountains that form Zimbabwe's eastern border. Now we have scheduled uh, three nights in this fabulous region. And even with that amount of time, we'll only scratch the surface of um, things to see and do. Uh, Musangano uh, Country Lodge, uh, which in the local Shan language means the place where people meet, meet uh, will be our home. This very comfortable lodge provides a, a, a central base for our exploration. It features a top class restaurant. Uh, if you want, you can just chill for a day at this place. It's... It's absolutely perfect for that. The accommodation for the three nights are in these beautiful private uh, individual chalets. And as I said, uh, if you don't want to get involved in any of our planned activities, uh, there are plenty of walks, both gentle and challenging, uh, from the lodge that you can um, do um, that takes you through the enchanted forests. Um, this section of our itinerary will not be wildlife or history focused. But here we intend to really soak up the daily lives of our Zimbabwe, uh, of Zimbabwe rural communities. Our lodge hosts can arrange for us to visit farmers and communities in the region. And look, I promise you up front that this will not be one of those infamous tourist traps where the locals strap on the grass skirts because the tourists are coming. The locals really enjoy a visit and are happy to share their stories uh, of life with us. Uh, we can intersperse uh, this interaction uh, with the locals with a wide variety of other sightseeing activities. The region is absolutely stunningly beautiful. So next we head out of the highlands and into the midlands on uh, route to Zimbabwe's hectic capital city, Harare. Uh, and on the way we plan a stop at a tobacco plantation because um, April is the height of the harvest season and tobacco is a huge part of Zimbabwe's economy. 
Uh, Harare is a bustling, hectic place uh, with a population of over 3 million. Now, normally uh, on most tours, you would expect to spend some time uh, exploring the capital of the country you are visiting. However, uh, the traffic is so congested in Harare that it is nearly impossible uh, to utilize our time effectively. And I think it's better to spend our time productively um, out and about outside big cities, enjoying wild Africa uh, wherever we can in all its spectacular best. But we do want everyone to experience Harare and truly um, the drive into the heart of the city on our, on our arrival and the drive out the next day, I can assure you will be an eye-popping experience. The sights and sounds and uh, will definitely amuse. Definitely a fascinating experience from our air-conditioned coaster bus, that's for sure. But truly our visit to Harare will be rewarded tenfold because we will stay overnight at the five-star Abanzi Lodge. Now, this is a journey itself into African art and culture. And the lodge is set in breathtaking landscapes uh, covering many acres of land. The lodge owners themselves are extremely talented people in design, arts, and uh, their restaurant is world renowned. Uh, dinner tonight will be a special safari highlight, and I will leave it as a surprise for you uh, when we get there. So it's back on the road and back in the bush we go. Now we are heading for yet another incredible African wildlife experience in yet another UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, we're heading northish. Uh, to the wild Zambezi River where we'll meet uh, or where we'll leave Henry and the coaster bus for a short while and we'll board a sleek little comfortable uh, riverboat and head down the Zambezi River to Mana Pools National Park and our campsite for the next few days. Oops, can I change this? There it goes, now we're up. Um, here we'll meet up with our, our host, Steve Molnick. Here we'll meet, where are we going? Here we go. So our journey down the, um, uh, the Zambezi to our camp uh, will be absolutely spectacular because both sides of the Zambezi River here, uh, the Zambia on the other side, both these areas are wildlife reserves and national parks. So at our arrival, uh, we'll meet up with our host, um, Steve Bolnick, a very professional guide and, uh, and specialist, uh, uh, specialist walking, uh, operating walking safaris. He's also quite a, a well-known and uh, famous uh, photographer in uh, Southern Africa. Steve's camp will, is all set up on the banks of the uh, mighty Zambezi. And in this pic, you can see an elephant welcoming committee and over in the back there, those are the Blue Hills of Zambia in the distance there on the other side of the Zambezi River. Uh, the camp is set up just for the prime safari months and dismantled during the off season. It is completely eco-friendly um, with solar power, etc. cetera. Uh, it does have a backup generator just in case. Um, your safari tents are all beautifully decorated uh, and outfitted. They all have private facilities with toilet and hot shower in the rear, and they are set in the tree line overlooking the river. You don't even have to travel too far to enjoy the wildlife. Um, you'll note there's some water buck in this pick, and I think you can pick out just the glimpse of an impala to the left of those old water buck. Uh, and as we all know, you never ever feed the wildlife, and we don't. But um, this little group of furry and feathered friends had discovered um, uh, a temporarily misplaced uh, plastic dish uh, full of fresh water and are obviously uh, enjoying their lucky find. Um, we're going to have a lot of fun um, in Mana Pools. Uh, the wildlife viewing is absolutely superb. The wild dog family that featured in David Attenborough's um, wild dog documentary are regular visitors to our campsite. And I have been um, informed that a large lime pride has recently made this area their home. 
So leopards, vultures, impala, uh, we are really uh, uh, very privileged to be able to visit this remote ecosystem. And uh, we will spend our two full days here on a variety of, uh, of wildlife activities. Uh, from game drives, walks, even canoeing is available if you wish. It's a very special ecosystem, as I said, and only a privileged few um, ever really get to experience it. So back by boat and we'll uh, meet up with Henry in the coaster and then it's just a short uh, scenic drive uh, back through wildlife reserves down to Kariba Dam for lunch. And here we're gonna have, uh, hear the amazing uh, story of the building of this dam and Operation NOAA, uh, the biggest movement of wildlife since Noah's biblical escapade. It's, um, now, here's a few mind blowing uh, facts about this dam. Kariba is three times larger uh, than the Three Gorges Dam uh, in China. It's about 233 kilometers long about 40 kilometers wide at its at its widest and uh, its maximum depth depth is uh, approximately 100 meters. Now here's the amazing stat. It holds 180 cubic kilometers of water. Unbelievable. Um, so after lunch at Kariba, we'll depart from the little port of Kariba and um, head down by motorboat uh, for our next adventure in Matusa Donna National Park. Um, yeah, there's a quick pick of the Kariba port and uh, a water's edge picture uh, taken on route to Masango Safari Lodge. Uh, Masango Lodge is a small boutique lodge and like many of the locations where we will stay, um, like at Mana Pools earlier, uh, or just before in Wangi National Park earlier, uh, we will be occupying the entire camp. Uh, because of the very personal nature of this safari and the personal services offered uh, by many of our uh, small boutique accommodation providers, the safari size has to be limited to 14 members. And uh, yep, that's another Steve uh, who will host and guide us for our three nights here. Uh, that's Steve in the top right, obviously, and you can see him there pouring a um, early morning orange juice before he takes us off on a uh, morning uh, bird watch, uh, bird watching walk. Now your accommodation, once again, is in beautifully uh, well furnished safari tents. Uh, this one has a full brook and uh, full brook, full brick and tile bathroom and toilet facility, and those are built once again into the rear of the tents. And these tents are all nestled in the trees, uh, overlooking the lake, uh, just to catch the beautiful sunrises. Um, the tents are spread on each side of that communal boner, the meeting area that you can see here in the middle pick, and that's the boma, and that's where we'll meet for drinks and meals and to launch um, all our activities. Now, Steve is a great birding guide amongst all his other qualifications, and this area is rated third in Southern Africa and first in Zimbabwe in the latest bird census. So um, on arrival, I'll give you all a bird list um, and when we arrive at the lodge and we can all start ticking immediately. So, you know, truly, I've got a little reminder there. Uh, don't forget to bring your own individual pair of binoculars. So this is all about birds, birds and more birds. Um, we are going to have a great time with the birds. Look, probably one of the most fantastic sights you'll ever see is one of these magnificent fish eagles uh, swooping in to catch a fish. Uh, the call of the fish eagle, even the thought of it sends a, a shiver down my spine. But um, our stay here is not just about the birds. Uh, there are large herds of alleys, there are lions and cheetahs, uh, buffalo and a myriad of uh, small other game species in the area. And we'll be out and about in vehicles and on foot exploring the forest areas and the great shoreline plains areas. Um, and of course, uh, being located on the lake, we'll also enjoy um, and journey out and watch the hippo pods and uh, have our sundowner drinks. 
Um, after this adventure in Matusadona, uh, we'll board a charter flight to our next and our final adventure. So, so it's uh, back to where it all started nearly three weeks earlier and the venture is not yet over. Uh, Henry will meet us at the Victoria Falls Airport and straight back to our lodge uh, to plan our activities for our final days. Um, there's so much to see and do on our two full days here. Uh, the helicopter flight is a must do, I would think. Uh, Trish and I'll be there to help you book whatever catches your interest. Um, if you want, uh, you can join me as I'm be heading over to um, Zambia for half a day to join a micro light flight um, over the falls. Um, because Zambia, the Zambian side of the falls is where they set all. Uh, I've had great reports and have always wanted to do it. So in April 2024, I'm up for that. I think Naomi, who's handling the chat box tonight, has done it and loved it. Now, every famous tourist attraction in the world has a must-see unique attraction, and Victoria Falls is no exception. Uh, someone from Victoria Falls was obviously thrilled to visit the Follies Bergere in Paris, and they decided to replicate the attraction at the falls. So this is Victoria Falls' answer to the French Spectacular. Uh, the show is on daily at lunchtime, uh, and it is free. You can enjoy the entertainment. Uh, the Vulture Entertainment from the nearby lodge uh, while dining or have a seat in the bush for an up-close view. That's not to be missed. Um, obviously, many of the activities are going to be water-based and for the adventurous, there are suicidal activities such as the world-rated whitewater rafting experience. Uh, for those with even uh, greater suicidal tendencies, you can throw yourself off the bridge. Um, or if that's not enough, you could go for a, a go for a swim with a view in the infamous Devil's Pool. Now, this option, um, I am relieved to stay, will probably not be available during our April visit um, due to the peak flow over the falls. Uh, we truly don't want to lose any of you. Uh, the list of activities is extensive, from animal and bird watching walks uh, to an elephant experience, which is highly recommended. And the list just goes on and on. Uh, for shoppers, you're going to be well catered for also, as Victoria Falls has enough interesting boutiques and markets to blow out any credit card. Uh, we'll be there to assist you to book all your activities and get you there and back. Taxis around the falls are completely safe and cheap, and they all have a set price to get you down uh, from our lodge and back. Uh, another must-do activity is to experience high tea. Uh, seated on the cool verandas of the old colonial uh, architectural masterpiece, the Grand Isle Victoria Falls Hotel. This has been the haunt of kings and queens, movie stars, heroes and villains, and us. And uh, on one day, I'm pretty sure uh, we should all be able to arrange to meet up there for lunch, uh, lamingtons and cucumber sandwiches, of course. And we'll probably discuss the latest cricket score from Lords. Uh, if you do, if, well, we'll definitely get down there. Um, but do remember to spend some time checking out the um, all the historic pics and sketches that line the corridors. They're absolutely amazing. Uh, there's also a very romantic chapel in this complex if you wish to get married on our safari. Um, our dinners will be spectacular. And one evening, we'll dine at the Boma restaurant where you have a wide variety of um, buffet self-serve foods to select from. And those of you who wish, you'll have the opportunity to sample a variety of game meets, um, all while enjoying the entertainment of drummers and dancers. And you can join in with the drummers um, if you wish. And sadly, um, on our last night, we'll head off for our romantic private sunset dinner cruise on the Zambezi River, and accompanied by hippos and crocodiles and Sue Cotterell who will entertain us with the fascinating history of um, the famous African explorer, Dr. Livingston, and all his exploits in this part of deepest, darkest Africa. So I guess at this time, there is only one last formal activity uh, planned for our 2024 beautiful Africa Ruby anniversary safari. And that is for all of us to fill our champagne glasses, uh, not with champagne this time, 
but with pure African water and to raise our glasses and toast the conclusion of our grand adventure with a very old African proverb. Those who drink from the water from Africa are destined to one day return. And uh, we'll now leave you with that thought. And be on behalf of all the Backtrack team, thank you very much for tuning in to our first ever Africa Zoom presentation. Uh, we hope we have inspired you to join us on Safari in April next year. Uh, we'd love to have you along on what we have planned to be a once in a lifetime Safari, um, African Safari experience. If you wish to learn more about the Safari, the full day-to-day -day itinerary is on our website and you are welcome to contact us uh, myself or any of our, uh, our team by phone, email or carrier pigeon. Um, we'd love to chat with you. Um, we do believe that the more you know before you go, the more you will enjoy the experience. This Safari uh, has limited numbers. It's a maximum of 14. So it's first in, first served. So good night to all here in Oz and uh, see you soon to um, Trish who's tuned in at the falls. Uh, I know it's midday there, so I hope you're out of your pit and working hard. Uh, the Great Southern Safari team are all looking forward to catching up with you in a few weeks uh, for our Great Southern Safari. So now in conclusion tonight, Trish, Henry and I and all the team look forward to meeting you if you do decide to join us on a once in a lifetime, never to be repeated, Ruby Anniversary Safari in April 2024. That's our beautiful African Safari. Good night. <laughs>